Hi everyone, I'm Amir Golami, and today I will be talking about systematic neural network quantization. This is a joint work with many people in our lab, as well as our collaborators at Amazon. So the cost of um, training neural networks and deploying them has been exponentially growing over the past few years, and one of the approaches that's very promising to address that is quantization. So quantization helps us by reducing the precision for weights and activation, and that in turn enables us to use low precision logic. And so the way that quantization works is very simple. Essentially, we have a set of real values, for example, the parameters of a convolution that's shown here. And we want to, instead of using FP32 precision, we want to use reduced precision, for example, int8, to represent them. For example, we want to represent 5.64 with 217. If we can do that, then that enables us to perform the convolution and matrix multiplications and accumulation using integer, integer logic, which is much more efficient than, than floating point logic. And so how does quantization work? It's very simple. Uh, it's essentially a mapping between floating point values in the real line to, to integer values. And so this is the formula, very simple operation. You have your real value, you divide it by the, by the number of partitions that you have, you perform a rounding operation, and then you subtract an integer to make sure that the zero point is exactly represented. So if you look at a layer, for example, you know, one layer in the middle of the, of the network, here you have X, you're doing different types of convolutions. If you look at one layer, we're essentially performing operations such as matrix operations, W times X. And if our W is represented with integer values, we can essentially perform this multiplication using integer logic, which is more efficient. But we have to make sure that we take into account that you know, this, uh, this integer value here has a common scale. So we need to make sure that we take care of those scales. And if we do that, which is pretty easy, we can compute the output using integer, integer logic. So let's, let's take a look at this. So here is the same example as before. We have y equal w times x. And let's consider for simplicity that we are doing symmetric quantization, uh, which means that the zero value will be equal to zero. And let's consider four bit quantization. So with four bit quantization, we're representing the weights with four bit integer, and we have a common scale for all of the weights. Essentially, we have fact out, factored out a common scale out, which could be a floating point number, or it could be a rational number. Same thing for x and same thing for the output. Computing the output is very easy. We first perform the multiplication of w and x, the integer quantized values. We accumulate them in integer 32 precision. And once we have this, essentially, Based on this identity, we just need to multiply it to Sx, Sw divided by Sy and perform a rounding operation to compute the output activation with 4-bit integer. This is very simple. However, a lot of the algorithms are actually not using this method. A lot of the algorithms are using what's called fake or simulated quantization. This is what I just described is integer-only quantization. So what is simulated quantization? The way that simulated uh, quantization, also known as fake quantization, works is the following. So the parameters of the model are stored with reduced precision. So we have the parameters stored in reduced precision. And the activations are also quantized. But when you're performing the arithmetic, when you're performing the multiplication and accumulation, uh, FP32 is used. And so this means that, you know, model footprint is reduced because we are storing the weights in reduced precision, but we cannot benefit from the, from the faster integer logic for quantization. And so this is a big problem. And one of the problems here is that, you know, it's not just this convolution. You know, for a convolution, you can obviously factor out the scale and, you know, you, you're going to get the same result uh, compared to integer only if it's just a convolution. However, the problem is that for many other components in the network, such as batch normalization, simulated quantization uses floating point to represent the parameters in batch norm, which is a big problem. Because if we quantize batch norm parameters, we know that we're going to get lower accuracy because batch norm is very, very sensitive. So if you're using floating point values here, then we cannot deploy this quantized neural network on a hardware that's doing integer only, integer only uh, arithmetic. Or another example is the residual connection. A lot of the quantization works in the literature use floating point arithmetic to perform the addition in the residual connection. Again, this helps with the accuracy. However, it's, it's not feasible to deploy this on integer only hardware to get speed up. You know, at the end of the day, we're doing quantization for two goals. One, reduce model parameters, and two, get speed up. However, we cannot get that. And in fact, if you're performing this type of quantization and you attempt to deploy it on, 
on integer-only hardware, you're going to get very, very high errors. So let me show you an example of why that's the case. So in fact, simulated and fake quantization is can create order one error, if even if we ignore the batch norm. If we just perform the residual connection using simulated quantization, which uses floating point arithmetic, and we then compare this with integer-only arithmetic, it's going to create order one error. It's not an epsilon error that FP32 has. So that's because, because of the rounding operation. A rounding operation, which we're showing here as integer, is not linear. So the rounding of A plus B is not the same as rounding A and then adding it to the rounding re rounded result of B. An example is 2.4 plus 1.3 if you first sum these two numbers and then you round it, you're going to get four. But if you add the, the rounded values, you're going to get three. And this is an order one error. It's not an epsilon error. And so while performing simulated quantization does help accuracy, you know, when we're running it in PyTorch, but in fact, if you run this in hardware, you're going to get very, very high error, especially for low precision quantization. And so we actually computed this error even without the batch normalization problem. If you just have this residual connection problem, we found that we can create 50% L2 difference, the difference between the activation stored in hardware using uh, integer-only hardware and comparing it with what you're getting in your simulation can be as high as 50% for ResNet50 on ImageNet. And if you're going to 4-bit, it can be as high as 100%, uh, so, you know, which, which is expected because every time you're performing a residual connection, you're creating an order one error. So how can we solve this? And I, and I highly, highly recommend this book from Goldberg in 1991, What Every Computer Scientist Should Know About Floating Point Arithmetic. Very interesting fundamental issues here. How can we solve that? Well, we can completely avoid doing any floating point logic, right? Uh, we have the weights and activations in, in four. Let's perform the multiplication and accumulation using integer only arithmetic. If we do that, and we make sure that the batch normalization, residual connection, pooling, and even nonlinear activations are, are uh, using integer-only arithmetic in our, in our PyTorch code, in our simulation, then we can essentially deploy that in hardware and get exactly the same results. And the key here is the treatment of batch normalization layer. Again, a lot of prior work in quantization keeps batch norm parameters in floating point precision because batch norm is very, very sensitive. And the work from Google which was doing integer-only integer quantization, didn't treat batch norm uh, in the most optimal way. The, the, the important thing here is that we can quantize batch normalization. That's not a problem. However, the key idea here is the following. When you're doing quantization of your training, when you're fine-tuning your neural network, you need to first make sure that the batch norm statistics are first calculated with high precision so that you can correctly calculate the mean and standard deviation of activation. And after you have calculated those correctly with high precision, then it can be quantized and fused with the convolution layer. So this is really important. And if you do this, you can also quantize the batch norm and there would be no accuracy degradation. So let's look at some of the results. We have tested this on a wide range of tasks. Uh, this is three neural networks for image classification on ImageNet. You can see the result on MobileNet v2, where the baseline model gets 73% accuracy with 32-bit precision for weights and activations. And Hawk V3, which is this work, is able to get 73% accuracy, 73.01, with only 8-bit for weights and 8-bit for activations. And all of the arithmetic here is integer only. There is not a single floating point uh, multiplication division uh, being performed here. And you can see that the total operations in the neural network in MobileNet V2 has been reduced by a factor of 15 and the model size has been reduced to 3.3 megabyte, which is really, really low for this compact model with such a high accuracy. We have similar results on ResNet50 and Inception v3, and here is an interesting result related to the batch norm. So this is integer-only work from Google, Jacob et al. They were quantizing ResNet50, and they, they achieved 74.90% accuracy. If you treat the batch normalization in the way that I just explained, you can actually close the gap. You can get much higher accuracy. 77.58 for, for ResNet50. And for Inception, you can improve integer only quantization results by more than 4%. So we can essentially close the gap uh, for Inception V3. And for people who are familiar, they know that this is the highest uh, accuracy for Inception V3. So we're using a strong, strong baseline and still there is no accuracy degradation. 
We also got very good results for uh, other, other neural networks, including transformers. Here, the key idea is to use integer-only arithmetic for the nonlinear operations such as GLU, softmax, and layer norm. Uh, layer norm because it's using square root, so you need to use the square root, uh, uh, you need to calculate square root with integer-only arithmetic, which is, which is possible. And interestingly, here we found that when we are using integer-only quantization, we are actually getting better results in terms of average glue score, both for Roberta Base and Roberta Large, which is quite interesting. Uh, we think that this is because uh, when you do the quantization and then you, uh, um, when, when, you, when you do quantization, there is less opportunity for overfitting. So that's why we're getting really good results for the smaller tasks in glue. We have also applied this to automatic speech recognition. This is a paper that we just posted to archive last week. Two models, QuartzNet and Jasper, both of them are from NVIDIA, that is uh, used to perform automatic speech recognition, and we apply integer only, uh, and we saw that there is very little accuracy degradation on the Libri speech data set. And we actually took a step further and used zero free, zero shot quantization or, or data free quantization for this task. So the conclusion here is that you can perform integer only, integer only quantization and there is very, very little accuracy degradation. And that means that you can perform it, you can, you can perform inference much more efficiently as before. However, a big question is, how can we go to lower than, lower than 8-bit? So with 8-bit, there is no accuracy degradation, but certain applications require a lower latency. So can we actually push this even further? And one of the things we can do is 4-bit quantization. So many hardware, including NVIDIA's G uh, RTX, uh, do support uh, accelerated 4-bit uh, tensor operations. The problem here is that if you use uniform 4-bit for all of the layers of your neural network, there is going to be an accuracy degradation. But there is an easy fix for this. You can use mixed precision quantization. So the idea here is that if you have a neural network, you want to keep some of the layers that are very sensitive at higher precision, for example, the first few layers, because they're extremely important for extracting Gabor features. And some of the other layers in the neural network, if they're not sensitive, you can use lower precision. And with this, you can actually get, get good speed up. But how can we do this? Because if you have even just two choices for every layer, this is going to be two to the power of the number of convolutions in the network, which is an exponentially large search space. So how can we set the precision for each, for each kernel without ad hoc methods? Well, the idea is very simple. We have to look at which layer is sensitive and which layer is not sensitive. And this is somewhat similar to the Jenga game. So when, when we are removing blocks in a, Jenga, in a Jenga game, we are only removing blocks that are not sensitive. So for example, you would never remove this block because it's very sensitive. It's going to cause a lot of perturbation to your tower. But you know, if you were playing this, probably you would remove this block because it's, not, uh, it's, not, you know, it's in a position that, the, that is not carrying a lot of weight. So how can we quantify this? Well, how do we do this? We essentially sometimes, you know, uh, perturb it with our hands, right? You know, essentially try to move it a little bit and see does it, is it carrying a lot of weight or not? We move it in different directions. We can apply the same idea to the neural network. If we had a way to perturb the parameters in the neural network, and we were able to do this for all the different directions and see how does the loss landscape look like? If the loss landscape is flat, that means that this particular layer or convolution is not sensitive to quantization and we can perform low precision quantization for it. But if a layer is very sensitive, it means that it has a very, very sharp loss landscape. Even a tiny bit of perturbation is going to cause a big, big change in the loss. We're going to keep that at high precision. How do we plot this loss landscape? Well, you know, if, if the neural net only had two directions, you would perturb it across two different directions. You would perturb the parameters across this direction, the same way that we perturb a block in a Jenga, Jenga tower. We will look at the loss landscape. How is the loss landscape changing when we are perturbing it across this direction? We perturb it across the second direction, and we, we look at the loss landscape. But the thing is that in neural network, you have you know, millions of directions. And the right way to quantify this, the right way is essentially to look at the Hessian. So the, the way that, the, that this works is that we have the first derivative, which gives us the slope of the loss, and we have the second derivative, which gives us the curvature of the loss. The higher the second derivative, the sharper is going to be the loss landscape. And if the second derivative is small, it means that the loss landscape is flat. So we actually showed some theoretical results in NORIPS 
uh, Hawk v2 paper, which was accepted in NORIPS last year, where we showed that under certain assumptions, the right metric to look at is the trace or the sum of the diagonal of the second derivative. So the trace is essentially equivalent to the sum of all of the eigenvalues of the Hessian, and that in turn means essentially if the trace is small, that means that the lost landscape is flat across all the different directions. So if you have a layer that has, for example, 100,000 parameters, that means that the, the lost landscape across all of these 100,000 different directions is small. And so if you have a relatively large Hessian trace, that means that the lost landscape is really sharp. And so you don't want to, you don't want to perturb that particular convolution, and you're going to keep that at high precision, for example, in Tate. But if you have a relatively small Hessian trace, that means that it has a flat loss landscape, and you can essentially quantize that to lower bit precision. So let's look at some of the results. So here is a result for resonant 50. Uh, we showed this before for 8-bit quantization. So with 8-bit quantization, we were achieving 77.58% accuracy. If you apply this idea, which is fully automated, you're not doing anything manual here when you're setting the bit precision. If you do this idea, if you apply this idea, then you can reduce the model size from 24.5 down to 18 megabyte. So essentially you have reduced the model size by six megabytes and you're able to reduce the total ops in the network for inference by about, you know, um, you know for example, 30%, 40%, and you're still able to get 76% accuracy, which is, quite accept which is quite high actually. And you know, for certain applications, you, you, are, you have no choice but to incur this accuracy degradation because of hard thresholds for latency. And importantly here, there is nothing manual. So all of the bit precision setting is completely automatic. But then one question here, and, and we have results for Inception as well, uh, as well as Resonant 18 and a couple of other networks in the paper. But the big question here is, what about the overhead of computing that curvature? Well, in fact, that's very, very fast because you can use matrix-free methods to calculate the curvature. In particular, we actually tested this on a four Titan RTX system. So we tested what is the overhead of, of applying this method on, on a simple, you know, four Titan RTX. This is not a supercomputer, it's not a DGX, very, very small system. And all the calculations, including the Hessian trace calculation, takes less than one hour so essentially all the calculation required to determine the bit precision can be done on a small system. And this is actually for ImageNet. And in fact, if you compare this to the prior state of the art, which was using AutoML, hardware ever quantization work, which was doing AutoML, it's a hundred times faster and it achieves higher accuracy. So for instance, we tested HAQ method on ResNet 50. Here the baseline is 77% and HAQ achieves 75%, but it requires 10 hours of search time. Because you know, remember the Jenga tower? What AutoML is doing is essentially learning which one of these blocks is sensitive and it's learning to use high precision for that. But we actually don't need that because we can, if we have the Hessian, we know what layer is sensitive. And in, in, our, in our case, there is no searching. It's just computing the, the Hessian and we're able to get better results. But the interesting thing here is that for other neural networks such as Inception, V3 or Squeeznext, the, the, the difference is much, much higher. For, for Inception V3, baseline is 77, HAQ gets 71% accuracy even after 50 hours of search time. However, Hawk V2, without any change, going from ResNet 50, there is no change to Inception V3, we get 75.68% accuracy, and we only need about 20, 25 minutes end-to-end uh, -end for the bit precision setting. And same thing for Squeeznext. So actually, it is going to be faster if you look at the end-to-end -end, end -end timing. So in summary, the basic idea here is the following. One size does not fit all. We, you know, when we're doing the quantization for a particular neural network, we have to look at the sensitivity of the, neural, uh, of the neural network layers, which is a function of the model architecture as well as the data set, as well as the data set. And we can automatically quantify the sensitivity uh, to quantization and to pruning. I mean, the same idea applies to pruning as well using Hessian. And we have actually recently applied this idea to pruning, a Hessian Aver Pruning and Optimal Neural Implant is a paper we posted online uh, last month, which uses the same idea. It's essentially removing, now removing the blocks from the Django block, you're going to only remove them if, if they're completely insensitive. So that's basically the idea there. So in summary, 
we can perform integer only quantization that that's now possible and there is no accuracy degradation or very very small accuracy degradation for intake quantization and compared to the prior state-of-the-art integer only quantization work from Google we are able to get about 4% higher accuracy and that is due to the to the way we are treating the batch normalization layer and we've tested this on a wide range of models including compact models such as mobile net and we have looked at different tasks image classification automatic speech recognition and even natural language processing and we just showed that uh, showed a method for doing sub intake quantization we, you can perform this you don't need to perform auto ml or exp you don't need to do expensive searching and the key idea here is to systematically detect which one of the layers or convolution blocks in your neural network is sensitive. If it is sensitive, you're going to keep that at high precision. And if it's insensitive, you can quantize that to low precision. And we have actually verified all of the results with direct hardware implementation. We are not actually using any of any simulation. So we have actually uh, deployed this in hardware and we have verified that both the accuracy and the speed, uh, speed up uh, is achieved. So thanks so much for your attention. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to email us. Thanks so much.